Hey guys, this is MacHeads101, and today I'm going to be introducing the Quantum Programming Series, which I plan to make uh, throughout the next couple months. Now, this series will basically show how to use a programming language called QCL to write and test programs written for a quantum computer. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what a quantum computer is, essentially it's a computer which um, uses quantum principles to calculate things much faster than a regular computer could. And there are certain things it can do faster. There are certain things that it can't necessarily do faster. But the idea of this series is we're going to explore how a quantum computer is different from a regular computer and how to write efficient algorithms for a quantum computer. Now, at the moment, um, IBM Research and various other research labs are working to actually construct the first uh, physical quantum computers. Um, but at the moment, no physical quantum computer has been built besides very small machines which are somewhat um, useless because regular computers are actually still powerful enough to emulate them. But in the near future, I can see quantum computers being produced that a regular computer couldn't emulate. And these quantum computers have enormous potential, and it's important to be able to understand how to program for them and how to think in terms of quantum algorithms. So I'm just going to talk briefly about some of the advantages of quantum computing. Uh, one of the biggest ones, which essentially um, was a big driver for the quantum, you know, the quantum computing research industry as a whole was the invention of Shor's algorithm, which is uh, an algorithm for a quantum computer, which allows a quantum computer to factor a ridiculously large number and in a pretty small amount of time. And the reason that this is important is that currently, if you, for instance, in your browser, use HTTPS to go to some website, um, and then you're ensured that your traffic is encrypted so it's secure. Um, all that needs to be done in order to crack that encryption and actually see what you're doing and totally invade your privacy, all that someone needs to be able to do is factor a very large number um, in order to break that public key encryption that your browser is using. And currently, regular computers basically can't do that without spending a ridiculously long amount of time. However, a quantum computer uh, as I just mentioned, can use Shor's algorithm and actually factor that number um, pretty quickly and immediately break your, your encryption. So uh, quantum computing has that benefit already over regular computers that we know of an algorithm for a quantum computer that can factor a number very quickly. And uh, that's just one among many of the advantages to quantum computing. And in order to understand Shor's algorithm, which uh, we will get to in the series, what you need to understand is how various quantum principles work and how um, interference works. And I'm going to have to explain a lot of math principles along the way, which will be necessary. Um, but one of my goals for this series will be that even if you're not amazing at math or you're not amazing at programming or you're not amazing at either one, you're just interested in quantum computing or cryptography or security or whatever it is that you're interested in, I'm going to be trying to guide everybody through the process of learning quantum programming um, and understanding quantum principles that are required you know to write good quantum programs and so to do this at some points I'm going to be showing you bits of uh, calculus bits of linear algebra I'm going to be explaining various programming techniques um, and QCL is a pretty good language it's similar to C so uh, in just in syntax that is so if you're familiar with programming in a C like or Java like language you'll be familiar with the um, the QCL uh, syntax. So that'll be fantastic for those of you who are good at programming, but even for those of you who aren't, I'm going to be explaining all the principles uh, in a lot of depth. And so my goal with this, my ultimate goal with this series is quantum computing's a new concept that not very many people understand, and I just want to make everyone uh, who watches this series at least get an idea of its potential and how it can be utilized. And I think that this will make it uh, you know, a much brighter future once this new, you know, series of quantum computers maybe will hit the market in 10 or 15 years and we'll have people who actually understand how to create quantum algorithms and do cool things with them. Um, so in my next tutorial, which I hope to be making in the couple, in the next couple days, I'm going to be showing you how to install uh, QCL on a Mac. I won't include something on how to install it on Windows because I'm not sure it's ever actually been tested on Windows, but I know for a fact that the developer who wrote it um, created it for Linux and Mac. And I've managed to install it on my Mac pretty easily. I'm going to be showing you how to do that in the next video. Um, so just stay tuned and uh, look forward to that. 
in the link in the description, I'm going to have some reading that you can do. It, uh, it, you know, it won't be necessary for the series, but it's interesting to read about the various quantum principles. And you know, there's an introduction to quantum computing that I learned from originally, and I'm going to include some links on linear algebra lectures in case you're interested in learning linear algebra. Um, for this tutorial series because uh, we certainly are going to be using some linear algebra principles even if I don't use linear algebra directly. Um, so I hope you um, look forward to the series as much as I do. Thanks for watching MacKids101. Subscribe and goodbye.